What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 26 of my Total War Warhammer 3 modded Serena Catrin Immortal Empires campaign. Sorry about the delay on this one folks, I meant to uh, get this episode out yesterday, but unfortunately my uh, time management skills uh, need a little bit of an update, just not enough time in the day sometimes. But here we are, uh, last time Mother Stankia got her crown of claws, her second and final uh, quest item that uh, gives her, the, wait, that's the Cauldron of Power, uh, that gives her some uh, buffs, uh, but more importantly, the area missile resistance effect, which is going to be nice when in particular fighting potentially the Wood Elves, as more likely than not we're going to just go ahead and burn them down. Plus, there may be some territories that we may not necessarily want out of here, but to trade to Imperials so that we essentially have a nice contiguous border. Anyway, in terms of what we got to do uh, this particular turn, I'm not sure that there was anything left at the end of last time uh, for this turn, at least in terms of battles. So we're just good to go and end it and proceed with what we're doing. Our recruitment is going in full force now. Warbear Riders and Acolytes of Ursin coming in. We got the uh, Little Groms and the Zargard for the Zargard army. Uh, Baladna the Defender's army is soon going to uh, start getting uh, units on the field as well, starting with the Frozen Heart of Winter, and then we'll have Recruiter Talishev recruit additional ones as well. It's all coming together as Kislev gets stronger and stronger. And now, a few of you asked what the uh, what the objectives are, and the only long victory campaign objective that we have left is uh, destroy the Fecundites. Frankly, we could have done this like 30 turns ago, or possibly even longer ago, but uh, uh, they were kind of useful in keeping other factions busy here, and it's not like they ever turned on us, so it was perfectly fine to delay them while we dealt essentially with bigger threats threats that weren't quite as penned down as the uh, Fecundites were. As for the real threat, obviously that's the Slaneshi Coalition. The Between the three factions, between Nakari, Marathi, and Sigvold, and the fact that they own the Donut and all lot of all of this, they have more than 50 settlements between them, which is pretty darn massive if you consider them as one coalition slash empire, and we are at war with all three of them. Uh, does kind of make sense as well. But anyway, uh, let's end the turn. I probably should have been saying all that stuff while said turn was ending. And uh, see if anybody attacks us this turn. Alright, a raiding Bloodwind Keep, trait gain supervised. Okay, we don't really care about that. No attacks so far. Frankly, I don't think Nakari or Marathi are going to sail all the way over here, at least not right now. They're still busy cleaning up what remains of the donut and a few of the other nearby factions. You want us to join war against Templehof? I don't see any need to do so. And the turn keeps on ending. The wheel keeps turning and the turn keeps ending. So while the turn is ending, okay, a little bit late now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> With regards to the engagement threshold, I mean, technically we haven't really been reaching the uh, likes threshold at all, but we've been getting over the threshold in terms of comments, and considering how good you guys have been doing about that, I kind of feel bad about not doing the hour long, so... This time around, we'll continue it hour long wise for now. Uh, defeat the following lord in battle, Lokir Felhart. Ooh, this will show us where he is. Oh, he's far. Okay, we can just ignore him. We can just ignore him and move towards Wei Jin when possible. Now, here's the question If we move the Ledna the Defender here to the Foundry of Bones, how much more movement speed or range would your Rogni have? I'll say not that much. I was just wondering how many turns it would take to get to the Red Fortress, but frankly, it looks like the two of them can just take the place together, so... You go here. And... is this... this is the last territory of Grimgore, is it not? Yes, it is. Alright, well, fare thee well, and ooh, that was our last turn of materials at sea. It was a fantastic buff. Well, we had it, but alas, we have it no longer. Foundry of Bones? You can channel. Oh. Probably should have had your Rogni channel as well, but oh well. Uh, close victory. Are we able to auto-resolve this with the medium casualties? Will we heal up enough? I'm just gonna hope that we will, because once again I'm disinclined to fight these little battles. Come on, come on, don't screw us on this. Eh, eh. A little bit of damage, but we have to spend two turns moving and healing up, so I think, uh, I think we should still be able to heal to full. It should be fine. 
And hopefully that won't happen anymore to your Rogni's army after a little bit, as uh, there we go, Grimgor's hard boy is destroyed, as uh, we will have much more powerful units to allow for that auto resolve. Anyway, Beledna, you can just stay out here, except for a little bit of attrition, but whatever. And we'll level everybody up here before we fight the next fight, which is going to be Village, who only has the two territories, Red Fortress and I believe the gate here, Snake Gate, which we're going to prepare to assault, I guess, next turn. You are going to channel a little bit. <laughs> our most moneyless, uh, moneyless, our most uh, monoless, I guess, uh, Lord, go right here, very near to the gate. There we go. And the reason for that was because the winds are tempestuous, so we get a lot more magic uh, in Snake Gate. We will suffer a little bit of attrition, but wait. Maybe we can actually reduce that. You, let me just see here. You have most of the important stuff, and while I did want to get Cursed Frontier, perhaps a reassuring presence can deal with that for us, assuming that Retinue Quartermaster won't be enough. Once again, I'll just skip the Thunderous Orator for a bit. So Retinue Quartermaster and Retinue Quartermaster. Which makes it 95, still suffer a little bit of attrition. Reassuring presence. And now we suffer a tiny, tiny bit. I've been so, so close. Alrighty. Uh, we just gotta get to that immunity. Not that the two units loss is going to make any real kind of difference. Uh, knowledge of, or blessing of knowledge isn't going to be useful to us right now on our mage, simply because we don't have enough mana to make use of it. Let's get another point in Crystal Sanctuary. I guess, frankly, I don't care about any of these spells all that much. Well, you know what? One point in Frostblades, and just in case. We could also move towards Onslaught, and we probably will. It'll just be a little bit. Next up, we have a tech to pick. We just completed the Port Merchant Guild, giving us plus 30 growth, which is pretty fantastic. And uh, sort of counteracts the need for the Blessing of Saliak, because, well... At this point, needing more than a thousand devotion per turn, and the fact that we're actually losing devotion due to the uh, uh, due to the chaos territory commandments right now, it's unlikely that we'll be able to pop Saliak again, which is a shame. Especially the casualty or punishment is really quite nice in red territories, which is allowing things like well, Urogni healing up from that. But oh well, it's just unlikely that we'll get. To over a thousand anytime soon. Anyway, Serena Catrin, I do believe you had a date with Tamarkan himself, so let's level you up and let's head on in there. Uh, what are we missing here? Uh, once again, we're not super likely to cast with Arena when we can cast with uh, Serena Catrin because she has the reductions. We could go through Calming to reduce the miscast chance of Serena Catron, but her miscast chance is already so low that it's relatively unlikely. I'm going to say two points in Blizzard and then one into Arcane Conduit for the power recharge and the spell mastery. Biting Winds, Swift Wings, this is all fine, but I guess we'll get Calming. Eh, go for it. We'll obviously max out her spell work, but that's just not super critical. Anyway, uh, what about here for our Patriarch? We are the elite for the Vigor Loss Reduction most definitely, and then I guess we'll go for Impassioned as he is somewhat likely to get targeted by stuff, and is relatively fragile in terms of his stats. There we go, good enough. This should wipe Tamarkan out, and one more chance. Okay, yeah, so... I just wanted to test it out, so I was wondering whether the information about whether Boris spawns in Nefkazi was old information or not, because things change, and I don't, I definitely don't fully read every single patch notes, uh, thing by thing, or line by line, so I was wondering if we could get the spawn here uh, instead, because the Tower of Torment is the province that uh, Boris starts at. Unfortunately, it looks like it probably is still Nefkazi that he revives at, which is a bit of a shame, but what can you do? What can you do? Uh, he's in March stance. Uh, okay, wait. I mean, we'll be wiping Tamarkan out very shortly, so we'll move you in March stance right here, and then we'll move you to kill this army off. If it can be called an army, like so. And we'll auto-resolve you. And get a free sort of strife for our trouble, and I guess take the tiny amount of cash. Then, yeah, Vitaly, you don't need this. And then, 
Because if I cast her for Midoran, no, 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 no. Those are only for lords, and we got more armies on the way, so let's well, not. Uh, you cannot heal, and you will suffer attrition on... F Actually, will you suffer attrition? No, you're immune to attrition, so you're fine. Just start moving towards the Tower of Torment, and Vitaly, follow him as well. And then Alexander Kolesnitsa, you're going to go... Well, frankly, you're not really needed anymore, are you? A loyal sentinel nomad riding master. Yeah, you're now costing us money and not serving a purpose here. So, goodbye to you, sir. But thank you. We'll maybe use you for some purpose later on. Anyway, that is done. Now... It's time to knock out Tamarkan, who should still be a major threat, and one of the few threats, I suppose, to Serena Catrin's army. Uh, do we want to go into channeling stance or regular stance? Once again, I think we're not super likely to miscast, so let's go into motherland stance. And let's see what we got. All right, Pyrrhic victory, that's what I like to see. Now, there are a few things that are going to be difficult to deal with. They have Kargan the Crazed, who has his uh, Mortis Engine effect. They have Kazik the Befouled, who's an incredible duelist. And they have Tamarkan himself, who is uh, just a blob of HP and very difficult to deal with. Should be some fun stuff. Uh, we are back on the sled, and let's get that Steel Standard uh, back on Serena Katrin. Tamarkan with his 82 speed, I don't think he's going to catch you. <laughs> <laughs> Go. For generations, Kislev has endured unspeakable horrors. This is a mere distraction. All right, a mere distraction perhaps, but I do wager that this will be a fairly tough fight. The enemy army has a pretty decent stack, and on top of that, has uh, plenty of sort of single entities and a low unit or low entity units that are not going to be as susceptible to Tarina Katrin's usual manage, uh, magic rather shenanigans. That said, everything is susceptible to a uh, war sled shenanigans and uh, they're still not going to be able to stop her. <laughs> oh, it's so irritating. Uh, a nice charge into some of those Forsaken, taking about 25% of uh, the HP of quick uh, sort of drive-by of this Feral Mammoth as we go back down the line. Now, the key thing to this is that if there's one thing I've learned, it's that you got to distract Tamarkan and not let him reach your main line as he is uh, he's going to very much disrupt it. Fortunately, the Golden Knight with the freeze ability that she's got. I forgot the name of the ability. Should be pretty nice. Plus the silence of the Totem of Ursus as well. Anyway, it looks like Tamarkan is falling for it. And damn, that charge from Pupopolos when, uh, when it started moving really, really quickly. Anyway, Tamarkan has joined uh, the foray. We do have to watch out for him uh, killing off some of the winged hussars if we're not careful. Uh, but uh, hopefully the Golden Knight will be able to hold him back. Serene so and Katrin still uh, riding around in the sled, just being an irritant to those forces uh, that are out there. And by the looks of it, once again, we have managed to split uh, the enemy army. The war sleds have managed to draw forth many of uh, Flyer as some rot flies and furies attempt to follow them, but hopefully the Kislevite warriors and Zargar defend, while we send the war sleds back to fire over the heads of the other units, including the Ice Guard. And the rot flies will attempt to hit the Ice Guard as well, but they should be more than strong enough to deal with them. Alrighty, and there we go. Divide and conquer, working for us again. Half the army here, half the army there. Looks like uh, the Rot Knights have been by and large obliterated as the Snow Leopard, the Summon Snow Leopard, uh, Serena's Fang and Jagatai Khan, our Snow Leopards, have individually brought down a bunch of their models. Which is why we sent them over to that flank. Tamarkan's still being distracted by the... Uh, uh, by uh, the Golden Knight and has lost about 15% of his HP. Of course, he can recover that, but he's also going to have to actually get away from the Golden Knight, which I wager will be a problem. The main line has now completely gotten itself uh, engaged with the enemy army. And the Zargard and the Kislevite warriors are damn well going to have to hold and allow the uh, War Sleds and the Ice Guard to dish out their damage. War Sleds are now targeting the enemy Mammoth out here, who hits for about 600. Huh? Hmm. 
I, uh, yeah, I remember the mammoths in the quest battle for Imric, for the uh, dragon that summoned mammoths. They were hitting for 900, and I was wondering, do mammoths actually hit that hard? And it, it seems like those mammoths were either super-powered or special or something, because they certainly hit harder than this feral mammoth does. Though this feral mammoth won't be hitting too much more soon, as it's down to about 40% of its HP and is wavering, and I'm sure we'll be out of there soon. Great Unclean One has been summoned by a enemy cultist of Nurgle upon us, as they have a tendency to do. And we've actually sent Serena Katrin back a little bit to try to distract a few more of the enemy units and keep them from uh, joining the line, as we are starting to take a little bit of damage. Tamarkan used that uh, uh, Bound Army ability to deal heavy damage to the Ice Spicers here, and the Daughters of Saliak are currently engaged with Kazakh the Befouled, who generally is better off uh, being used as a single entity assassin than what the AI is doing here, so I'm not super upset at the fact that he is wasting his time slowly working his way through Ice Guard rather than, for example, knocking out war sleds or uh, going after Serena Katrin. Serena Katrin's distraction job is done. She's just going to use her mask to push on out of there. <laughs> oh, that sled is so annoying. And it looks like the Golden Knight and the other three single or two rather single entities have cleared out and the vast majority of the enemies around them here. And especially now that we've moved the winged hussars and the snow leopards away, it's just these three left to distract Tamarkan. It is working though. He's down by about 30% of his HP, and the Golden Knight is actually more or less still fine. And this does mean Tamarkan is not able to contribute to the rest of the fight, and which is exactly what we wanted. Perhaps what I should have done is uh, sent the uh, Patriarch back, because at the same time, uh, the Patriarch is not able to support our main line. But the Golden Knight and the other Frost Maiden do need healing as well. And we only have the one Patriarch in this army, so we gotta decide where we use that Salyax lullaby. If we want to divide and conquer. Anyway, a Heart of Winter comes down from Serena Katrin, the second one of the battle. Not just to dish out the damage to the enemies as they attempt to break our lines, but also to slow them down as they attempt to close the distance. It's a pretty effective tact against Nurgle, generally speaking. The Cryo Legionnaires, one of our Zargard, is definitely in bad shape now. The Mammoth is gone, and now we've switched our uh, uh, War Sled Fire to trying to gun down those units of uh, uh, Beasts of Nurgle. The Winged Hussars have joined the fray once more, charging into the rear line of the enemy and opening up a pretty big hole in their lines. The bounce power switches to about 85-90% in our favor, and it looks like the battle is turning. Tamarkan is down to a mere 20% of his HP, maybe even less now, uh, having been ta having taken a beating for this entire time from our single entities, all while debuffed, of course. And it looks like the battle will be soon ours, or will soon be ours, though damn is it taking some effort this time around. It's nice when Serena Katrin's army has to work for her victory. Time for the war sleds to join the fray, a once more charging in through the remnants of the enemy infantry, chaos warriors, and... Uh, and uh, plague bearers alike. There are not enough numbers left to threaten the war sleds, and we can use their mass to protect uh, the remnants of the uh, Zargard and Kislevite warriors, which admittedly held admirably. Out here, we've moved Saliak, well, or we've moved the Patriarch as well as uh, uh, the other Frost Maiden back to our main line to get a little bit of healing over there, while the Golden Knight continues to hold Tamarkan off, as she's been doing for about five minutes straight, which is pretty impressive. Tamarkan's still alive, but the rest of his army not so much as the enemy will shatter. The plague bearers will melt away. Serena gets a charge on Tamarkan and actually does a decent bit of damage, and it's now just time to bring him down. Now that golden armor uh, is gonna need some cleaning after all this, I wager. 
All right, a few more hits, and I'm sure Tamarkan will fall at last as the last unit on the field. In fact, we're just going to move Serena Katrin away because I feel like the Golden Knight has earned this particular kill rather than uh, taking it with Serena Katrin. She basically destroyed most of the rest of the army with her spells. So we're going to buff the Golden Knight with the Frost Blades, and uh, that should enable him or her rather to dish out sufficient damage to at last. And bring Tamarkan down. There he goes, falling off Bubabolos. Alright, we had a little bit of help from that summoned Snow Leopard. Frankly, I forgot about the summoned one, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we were using it to chase down some uh, Femir warriors or something like that, but uh, a return to help against Tamarkan at the very end. But there we go. Tamarkan goes down. Serena Katrin actually having taken some damage, but also done a massive amount of damage and kills. Yeah. The army bound abilities, once again, really, really annoying. They're hard, it's hard to dodge and it does a huge amount of damage. Frankly, it's lucky that we have so much spell resistance, as otherwise I fear that the, uh, that the units might have been destroyed due to that ability. Yeah, very nice. Hoping for similar battles in the future. Alrighty, very, very nice, and this is exactly why I wanted to save that Tamarkan battle specifically for Serena Katrin, as there are so few armies that would be as likely to pose a challenge to her army as his. Uh, the Kislevite warriors still somehow managing to survive in this army, funnily enough. Uh, That's so a good job to them. At 101 kills, the winged hussars have been winged with us since the very start. Uh, also got the most kills which is pretty darn impressive. The uh, war sleds did more damage than uh, everybody but the winged hussars by the looks of it, and they were sitting there sniping big old targets like the mammoth and whatnot. Uh, the Golden Knight eff effectively defeated Tamarkan, while Serena Katrin with her nearly 200,000 damage effectively defeated his army. Very, very nice. Alright, we got a decent bit of XP and decent bit of cash. This will knock out Tamarkan's faction effect and it gives you additional unit mass. I guess I was wondering what the new trait for Tamarkan is since they uh, deleted the... Uh uh, they deleted the old trait, which was just ludicrously overpowered, but a unit mass for Serena Katrin on that sled, I think we'll take it. You know what? That's pretty good. <laughs> Specifically for her, mind you, oh, but I've been very into the sled thing, and uh, yeah, it's working for me. Hey, another Shield of Sacrifice. Nice, we can put that on some more uh, Patriarchs as we go. Anyway, Yeti Peak is ours. More likely than not, we'll attempt to trade it to Gold Tooth uh, for various things. Maybe even take Titan's Notch and give it to Goldtooth as well. Once again, I was originally contemplating betraying him, but frankly, we don't really need to. Our income is pretty solid, and even if it does drop down to like 20,000 per turn after we build our new armies, I think that'll still be okay. And we're also moving this way as well, so it's not a big deal. At this point, our empire is big, and adding more admin doesn't necessarily make it so much better. So it's a better use of our time, perhaps, to uh, think of objectives. There's also the Sjarnagrund. I am tempted to go after them, just because of the massive battle that we'd be likely to get here. Jarnagrund itself should be pretty darn fun for Serena Katrin, like the uh, Tamarkan battle was. But anyway, for now, uh, you're still training. Unbreakable versus Stock. I'm gonna say Unbreakable. Next up, Ottomans. Uh... Reverend Patriarch or Ice Court Informer. Once again, even so late, we don't really have Frost Maiden capacity, so Reverend Patriarch is really the only way to go, so that's the way we'll go. All right, that looks good to me. Who's up next in terms of moves? Vladimir Mikheyev, still waiting for your Frost Witch to come back in. Four turns. Oh, man, it's going to be a while. All right, well, I guess we're proceeding to the Folly of Malefax then. We'll grab that and then... Hmm... And then move up to Infernius. And this is the last territory of the Crag, isn't it? I'm pretty sure it is, so we should prioritize it. 
But nonetheless, if we take the following malefics, we can move up here while perhaps we send Igor Talichev around the Palace of Princes to the Fetid Catacombs. Something along those lines. Either way, neither one of them will be able to uh, move this turn, so that's fine. You go here. Oh, one's a magic blowing, one's a magic strong. All right. Uh, get as close to the Palace of Princes as possible, so you don't waste oh, movement lady. range. And then Sorka Gospodar, you will follow. Uh, in March stance, I guess no choice. My bad on that. Alright, and then we'll move Vladimir yeah. down to the Folly. Take me there. And I guess we'll do the exact same thing, where we'll move you in, like, really, really close, and then we'll use Recruiter Gaspar to try to take it. I might do these between the episodes, if we can manage to end the turn this episode, because, uh, well, obviously, it'll otherwise uh, hurt our units because of that auto-resolve hating us. As it tends to do. Don't collect the income at the Twisted Terrors, at least not for now. We'll deal with it later. And, oh, there's another Ataman thing. Yo. Favors infantry, favors cavalry. Mmm... 90% of the time we're more likely to recruit infantry than we are cavalry, so uh, I generally pick Endorse Foot, and I think I'm going to maintain that as well. Alright, what else do we have? In terms of moves, we also have buildings to build, so there is that. Mother of Stanka. Ooh, wait. I just remembered. Where is that little Gabba? Oh, he's right here. Uh... I mean, it's just a bunch of basic gabos. Ooh, hello, what do we have here? Ikit Claw himself. Oh, we can reach a double Skaven stack. Ooh. They have a nuke, which is a shame, or it's going to be unfortunate for these guys. And they just built up their army, but I'm... I can't say no to fighting a double stack of Skaven. I just can't. I can't do it, guys. Help me, I'm broken. Anyway, uh, let's see, what do we have? Ice Court, Carcassonne, and Astalia are the ones that they're at war with, so... Are they only up here to try to annoy us? Do they sail all the way from over here? I guess they might own a territory at Akatane and Bordelow, eh? Hmm. Also, Wood Elves still doing pretty good. Well, uh, Castelton, you're gonna fight in a sec. Let's do some building building. And then we'll get into that. Not that there should be all that much building, building, mind you, simply because we've, uh, uh, the materials at sea has taken care of the vast majority of it. So, build up the farms everywhere we can, then we will, I mean, I guess continue building the church here, the market here, and the farmstead here as well. Looks good to me. Public order is fine as well. Vanaheim Mountains, farm, go figure. Plane of Illusions, farm and upgrade. And more farm later on. Eastern Steps, and definitely the taverns for growth and for movement range. Bloodfire Falls, we've got taverns, we got farms, and oh, you know what? We can wait for a turn and then, yeah, alright, so Tamarcon will be destroyed next turn. His faction will be destroyed next turn. Meaning I think we just ignore this particular territory. Well, we can build the maybe the market or something here. Now yeah, build the market here, and then here, assuming we don't build the church, we'll build the farm as well. But anything longer than two turns, we won't bother to build. We'll wait until we have the uh, commandment to deal with it for us. So yeah, that's Bloodfire Falls. What's after it? Eternal Lagoon. We can build the Obsidian Amulet Carver there. More trade goods, though Kislevite, Kislev isn't really a tradey faction. Our trade income is very, very low compared to some to somebody like that, well, High Elves or Empire or Skaven, anything really. Uh, Skaven is a surprisingly trade-centric faction as well, or at the very least they're quite good at it. Uh, yeah. Tavern. We'll upgrade the Floating Mountain first because of the construction cost reduction out of the Stonemason's Workshop. Kadatha, you are going for the Woodsman's Hut slash Lumberyard, Trade Quorum, and Farmstead. Red Wastes, I guess we are keeping the place, and huh, we have more Armored Cowsers here, should we desire them? Yeah, fine, build the Orthodoxy Chapel and don't collect the income here, and that's about it for the building building. Oh, yeah. Alright, next up, I guess we're doing a fight, so Wicked Claw, you're on the menu. We will level up, and then we will head on in. Let's get Guardian Calls, that we have it available for us for this particular battle. Uh, I'm gonna say Max Out Heart of Winter, should be a very solid spell against the Skaven. Patriarchs. Max out to the lullaby, dodge the song of winter sunlight, and I guess tough as nails so that you don't get killed as easily. You... oh wait. 
If Sons of Kislev a little bit, you have the Replenish Troops. If we level you, your Replenish Troops won't be as good. Nah, actually it will if we level it up, so that's fine. Like everything else can be ignored. Alrighty, Kostelton, another proper fight for you. You've taken down Wolfric, let's see if you can take down Akit Klai. Late to the campaign, perhaps, but, uh, well. You've been showing up, let's see you show up again. And don't get too nuked. He just has the one, but it will potentially wipe out a unit. Oh, we just gotta not let him wipe out the Episcop Battalion. We only have the one and we can't build more. What's a cooldown on this? 120 seconds. I forget, does that mean that he can drop it immediately, or does that mean that he has to wait 120 seconds to drop it? I guess we'll find out. Go. Alrighty, here we go. Castelton's army ready to go once more. Now the drum doesn't look too bad in the uh, blue and red as well. So the, uh, you know what, with the sort of wooden construction, if you just change out the uh, sort of a bear head, or, or change a bear head instead of the uh, dragon head here, I feel like it would fit in reasonably well with the sort of Kislevite aesthetics, especially considering the uh, sort of wooden construction we see of a lot of Kislev villages and and buildings in their settlements. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of works. It kind of works. We could even just say that this is in fact just a frost room. Gotta change those uh, uh, those eye gems to blue ones and we're good to go. Anyway, here we go. Should be a pretty tough battle. I wager the enemy has warp lightning spam. They have artillery and they have a nuke as well as Ikit Claw himself. Going to charge on in with our uh, War sleds, and it looks like a single volley from the Doombringers warp fire throwers takes out about 30% of the HP off one of our war sleds, and maybe 20% or 15% from one of the heavy ones as well. Pretty darn impressive, as I doubt it was charging through uh, the infantry that did that kind of damage. But charge we do have to, as the rest of our army is moving forward, and we have to distract the enemy artillery pieces to prevent them from firing. So, just gonna charge directly through that enemy army while we take up positions on top of this hill as fast as we can. And here comes a Warp Lightning Spam, missing the Yapiska Battalion here, which is, I guess, going to be their sort of uh, debut fight as well. Oh, I like the shields. I like the shields quite a bit. They got shields, they got maces, they got those uh, Patriarch-like uh, hats, I guess. Or did the Patriarchs have hats? Or am I thinking of Drujina? I might be thinking of Drujina. Now the Patriarchs do have hats, yes. I'm not crazy. You're crazy. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the fight continues. Fortunately, one of the uh, crews of the uh, artillery pieces have been sent scurrying, and now we can work on the second while our Streltsy have taken up their positions and have begun firing at the enemy. Both types of, or I guess all three types of Streltsy, because technically we have long range Streltsy, shorter range Streltsy, and then we have the Boydenov's Brawlers, which have their uh, blunderbusses as well. Which is nice. Plus we have the Streltsy in the... Uh, plus we have the Streltsy in the... War Sleds. Ooh, and I just saw uh, one of... Hmm, I don't know, is it Claw firing maybe? Not entirely sure. But anyway, Streltsy continue firing down. The rats are slowed by the heart of winter in the midst of the fight where Castelton is whacking away at them. And doing fairly decently at it. Unlike where he fought Wilfred, Kostaltin shouldn't be particularly threatened by the rest of the enemy army. And there we go, we've exactly hit two minutes, and I was carefully watching the timer for when two minutes would arrive on the field, and because uh, if the bomb didn't drop immediately, that's when it was going to drop. So, it looks like the enemy has targeted the Boydenov's brawlers with their nuke, and it will drop down... Ooh, damn. Unlucky that time around. So, the nuke essentially isn't, uh, oh, damn. 
Down to 12, but 12 units will survive if they can escape the battlefield, so it might still be okay. Unlucky that it managed to clip the Romanov's rifles over on the left side here, because uh, the nuke will drop somewhere randomly in the zone, and it dropped in probably the worst part it could have probably dropped. If it had dropped here, it would have done basically no damage. So, unlucky that time, uh, Castelton. Maybe you should uh, maybe you should have had a little bit more faith, prayed to Urson a little bit harder. But anyway, Ikid has brought plenty of reinforcements uh, with him, another Warp Lightning, but the Warp Lightning spam has uh, continued for the entirety of the battle and isn't liable to stop anytime soon. Our Yipiskov Battalion has also made their way into the fray and are engaging some uh, Clan Rats and Skaven Slaves and keeping them back from the rest of our line of Streltsy, which are still firing down. Our War Drum is also providing the uh, lovely buffs for us. We're gonna get that Frost Maiden's Kiss moving through those lines of rats while the Episcop Battalion holds them back. It gets starting to take a little bit of damage while the uh, long-range bombardment from the little Groms, who we've actually kept all the way back here to fire upon the enemy, is certainly doing a little bit of work. We've got the upgrade for these guys now, so their range is pretty massive at 600. 108, which is pretty neat. I do like that. It's time to target Ikit, however, as that non-stop Warp Lightning spam is getting really, really annoying, so we're not just going to have the, uh, uh, the War Drum, or not the War Drum, the Little Groms target him, but some of the Streltsy as well. As the Streltsy start focusing him, he quickly loses almost all of his HP, and another volley should bring Ikit Claw down. He gives us one parting brass orb on the Yepiska Battalion, but his Doom Wheel breaks at last, and he and his little pump rat are gone for good. Well, maybe not for good, as he'll revive, but uh, you know what I mean. <laughs> Anyway, Castelton and his Patriarchs continuing to hold off the Rat Tide together with the Rat Ogres up here and doing a fairly decent job, but it looks like there should be a big ol' morale shock to the enemy from that. One last parting Warp Lightning from the second enemy Lord will strike at us again, and we've once again taken quite a bit of damage on a fair few units, but it looks like the last of the enemy will rout, and the battle will be ours. Just gotta make sure we kill off the last of the enemy yeah. Uh, the last of the enemy unbreakable units, i.e. the Plague Monks, and maybe get a few more shots into the enemies as they book it on out of there. Well done once again to the guns of the Orthodoxy. I wasn't originally expecting to build a Castelton's army out to be the uh, Streltsy army, but I kind of like it. To be fair, it was inevitable that we would build a, a Streltsy army and then eventually. I just wasn't expecting Castalton's army to be that army, but uh, I do think it does work decently well because of that frenzy ability uh, that he offers his entire army, which is useless on the Acolytes of Ursin since they already have it. It makes the Streltsy quite a bit stronger in melee and uh, sort of shores up their weakness. Now, they're still not going to be able to fight on par with, like, a Chaos Warrior unit, but we have to remember that the Chaos Warriors actually have to reach the Streltsy in order to fight them, so there is that. Anyway, I just wanted to get a couple more shots of the rats attempting to flee through the woods as the bullets whiz through, hitting trunk and rat flesh alike. Ooh, all right, a very, a very nice fight came down to the Y for the Boydenov's brawlers there as the nuke almost took them out. Uh, that uh, would have been unfortunate, but at least it wasn't the Episca Battalion, who I was quite impressed with that. 155 kills, they outkilled all the Streltsy, which is almost surprising considering that they're a uh, supporting unit. It's just too bad we can't build any more due to the, uh, uh, due to them being a unique unit specifically for Castelton, but oh well, he, they're his personal guard, his personal uh, patriarch battalion, or I don't know what. Uh, anyway, uh, did quite nicely there. The warp lightning spam was just such a hassle, and when you're trying to do things like micro the sleds and stuff, you can't watch uh, several warlocks uh, dropping the warp lightning constantly on you at once, as Ikit Claw joined Infectic, and we're both constantly spamming that. Uh, 
the war sleds originally in this army meant to sort of stay with the line to bolster the melee effectiveness of the Streltsy. In this particular situation, because we had the nuke coming at whenever, and we couldn't really do that with the war sleds as their mass would have interfered with our main line, and so we had to uh, use them more like, well, they were, I guess, originally meant to be used. Anyway, we're going to uh, Seliak provides and heal up, as we are rather exposed out here. Like so, and we get that research rate armor for Castelton and wins a magic power reserve capacity as well, which ain't too bad. Uh, we're also in friendly waters, which means we'll heal up as we head back towards the orcs. I don't imagine these guys have sufficient troops to... Mm, to attack Marienburg, at least I doubt it. Hmm... We'll see. And we killed in battle, veteran warrior A, another St. Anishka's finger bone. Very nice. Uh, more healing, healing potion like you, sir. Let me just see here. So uh, you were one of the... Wait, wait, no. A recruiter Gujovic, we were sort of using you as a recruiter because you have a, or you have a leader over and now. Hmm. I guess we could swap them around. Or use one as a record. Okay, we'll, we'll deal with it later. We'll deal with it later. What is Festus doing? He's going for Wrecker's Point. Ooh. Wait, that's actually really nice. Uh, I assume he's... Oh, he's a great Chaos Dragon. Nice. Uh, I was going to have... Uh, I was going to have Mother Sanka go for Lorelorn, but it might be a better idea to have her take our now before somebody else can colonize it, like the Imperials. If we could get the... Gorsell territory as well. We'd have the entire Wasteland province, which considering we have Marienburg is really appropriate. Hmm. Alright, you know what? There's no other Festus armies nearby, right? Even in March stance, I doubt that he'd attack us. So we're gonna send you around here. Trespass in Ellen Delling's territory, I don't care. And Scout, you stay around. Oh, we'll see what happens. We were originally sending Mother Astanka down here to deal with uh, Festus anyway, so that's uh, that's just fine. Looks like they're going to try to retake Salzenmund. Frankly, Salzenmund would have been a decent pickup for ourselves as well, but, you know, not a huge deal, I suppose. I'll think about it. Anyway, uh, Recruiter Talichev, you, my friend, were supposed to head to Castle Vaden Rauken, and you will still do so next turn. These two are supposed to join Belidna of the Defender's army, and for now they can be in this army instead. Until we get her army ready to go. Which is kind of what your job is going to be, or at least one of them. Uh, should maybe get the Oath Brothers of Tor in your Agni's army then. Seems like the thing to do. I'll think about it. Uh, well, actually, no. If we sh if we do it, we should do it now. And if we do end up reviving Boris, well, well I'm not 100 percent married on the idea, married to the idea anyway. Uh, then we could transfer them. But for now, I feel like it's appropriate for Yorogni to have them, since he's hoeing acolytes of Orson and uh, war bear riders. Anyway, uh, let's see what else we have here. Recruiter Gajovic, you're fine. Vlasi Golitsyn, you're probably also fine. Beledna. The crit failure. Go steel tech here. Okay, you don't really need to steel tech all that much anymore, but you are not the only tech thief around. We got lots of them now. You are going to steel tech from uh, this place. Eight. Eight. That's a little bit much. Mm. Alright, I guess it's a little bit much either way. Don't die. Don't immediately die. Hey, a success. I wasn't actually expecting that to work. Uh, but hey, she didn't immediately die, so I can't complain. And uh, next tech thief, you. Well, I guess Castle Von Rocken is the only way to go. Don't you immediately die. And another success. What the heck? Shocking. I'm shocked. You have two turns, so you could, in theory, move to Adgig or to Kappelberg, although... But it looks like this place might fall to Carl anyway. What's the uh, likelihood of succeeding here? Six versus... It's much better here. Who are you again? Oh, right. You were another Frost Maiden, but you are supposed to be a temporary tech thief. Mm. Alright, fine. Move this tech thief out here. We gotta separate them so that they're stealing tech from various places at once. And who's up next? You are a tech thief as well. You can steal from Dieter's half and I guess. 
since Selzenmund is taken, and you can't reach Lorelorn. No one suspects an old Ellen Delling isn't going to be super happy about any of this, but, well, that's Ellen Delling's problem. Specialist for you for more tech thievery. Just got to get that tech up and running now. And you steal from Selzenmund. Ah, oh, they all succeeded. What the heck is going on? Game is uh, game is being good to us today. Giving us great big battles and uh, challenging ones, on top of uh, having all the uh, hag witches succeed. Anyway, you don't need to move at least not until we declare war on Belacor. I was gonna send Castelton up there since we're kind of busy up here as well. Hmm. I mean, if Mother Vistanke is able to take care of Festus, we could just ignore this and then just send him directly to Conquata. Use this as a base to, of operations to begin our war against the Slaneshi Coalition. Seems like the thing to do. Anyway, let's check out the diplomacy. Exiles of Nehek wants to be friends. I'm still kind of undecided on this. They are fighting the... Uh, they are fighting the Heralds of Ariel, who don't like us very much, admittedly. They don't like the treaties with Hexoadal or Exiles of Nehek. Really? You don't like the treaties with Hexoadal? What's wrong with Hexoadal? I mean, okay, <laughs> Vazdemundi isn't the nicest guy around, but nonetheless, uh, Carcassonne, you want a defensive alliance. The problem with this is that if we end up eventually fighting the Wood Elves, and there's at least some likelihood that we do, because we're allied with the, uh, we're allied with the Dwarves, and they're not too happy with them. The Wood Elves, I mean. I think we'll hope we can hold off on Carcassonne. A Vissenland and Nuln, frankly, I'm surprised you haven't uh, you haven't died yet, which is why we haven't done full military alliance with you. We could go military alliance with the Golden Order simply because we're already at war with all the factions they're at war with. Frankly, I was thinking they die, and there's a decent likelihood that they will. But if they don't, we could still get access to some of their stuff. So, yeah, why not? And a military alliance with you as well. Wait, how do you feel about Goldtooth? Yeah, they're fine with Goldtooth. Goldtooth's nice and neutral. All right. That looks good to me. Karakadrin, you've been with us for a while. I'd, I'd love to military ally with Karakadrin. It's just that we can't get bogged down in a war with Droika right now, and they hate each other, so there's... Uh... It's too risky, at least at the current time. The rest of that is fine. We did the building building, and we still have money left over. Other... Huh. What is this? Oh, Keep of the... Yeah, alright, fine. We'll upgrade the Keep of the Ice Queen. We're not getting a thousand devotion in two turns. It's just not happening. I'd rather upgrade these and increase the money-making capacity that we have in various places. So that'll be fine. And I believe that's all we can do for now. So, let's end the turn and then let's destroy Tamarkan for good. Oh, there was an outpost thing. Alright, let's check out what we got in terms of outposts. We do have the money to build them now. Though most of them are being built. Oh, I never built the one in Nuln because there wasn't a good one to build. I mostly wanted land ships from them, and they still don't have access to them. But I guess Wurtbad is the place to build it. Well, plus, Outriders with grenades could also uh, could also work. Let's track the outpost. Go for it. Watch them get confederated just as we do this. I wouldn't even be shocked. End turn. And hopefully I didn't forget anything. There was still recruitment to be done, but several of the recruiters are going to take many a turn to do said recruiting. So it shouldn't be an issue. And our Dodge army is coming along, and ooh, wait, that reminds me. I wanted to build a couple of rocket batteries for uh, our fire army. Uh, military ally. <laughs> no, I was just talking about that, Ungram. Someone's ears were burning. And, oh, looks like we're good. All right, at least in terms of getting attack. Seafarer for Castalton moves a little bit faster. Igorov gets a plague out for the love of plagues. Hungrier than the average bear gives us... Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Recruitment costs minus 50% for war bear riders. You gotta be kidding me. We just used a ton of money on uh, spending on these guys. Game. Why? <laughs> now they're 2.5k instead of the 5.7 or whatever it was we spent, but they take five turns. So I'm not. I'm disinclined to waste the uh, the time again. Game. Also, oh, villages here. I was gonna. I want. I'd like to give his defeat trait to Yorogni rather than necessarily Victor. Uh, watch him get killed by Miao Ying. Actually, probably not. Miao Ying's army isn't strong enough. 
Iron Hail Gunners, Dragon Breakers. I haven't tried those. Emmerich's <laughs> not going to like the sound of that, though. Also, hopefully Guildtooth can keep, it can actually keep uh, uh, Kugath down without us having to do all the work for him. And hey, yes, Festus did indeed take a Wrecker's Point. And are we able to reach... No. Hmm. All right, a stank here. Yeah. Go right here. In ambush stance. I don't know where the gobbles will go, but either way, we'll look to take our now for ourselves. Castelton, do we go for Bellacor right now, or do we help out with Faustus and stuff? I mean, admittedly, there's a lot of stuff here. It would be faster if we use two armies to do it, and it's not like we're currently at war with Bellacor. Hmm. On the other hand, by taking him out early, we... No, I, I still think we have to go for Bellacor. We'll, we'll leave a Steinke to do it in the south. Uh, Straits of Chaos, go here. We're going to grab this shipwreck and then we're going to land here. Take the Citadel of Lead first before Conquata. And my reasoning for this is that these guys might then sail out to Troll Fjord, and I don't like that idea. This isn't an island, is it? It's just some... No, it's just some little igloo lighthouse thing. Okay, uh, looks good. Ataman, another thing with the you guys. Uh, you. Favors infantry, favors cavalry. Okay, you know what? We've done favors infantry pretty much every single time. Let's do favors cavalry for once. And there's another one right here. Defender versus fiscally prudent. Yes, income from all buildings, please. Plus 10. And you're up to plus 20. Pretty solid. Lovely. A lovely indeed. Uh, trade gained, trade gained, yeah. What else do we have? Whoa, 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 whoa. Raiding. Raiding. Gold tooth. What you doing? Don't do that. Uh, okay, wait. So, here's the question. How much is Yeti Peak worth to you, Gold tooth? Basically nothing. That's kind of disappointing. All right, we will delete the farm here and we will build a military structure here. It's Rene Catron, take Titan's Notch because it's on the way. And I'm still hopeful that we can give that both of these territories to Goldtooth and he'll be uh, he'll be more likely to be friends. Purchase step, it doesn't really matter what we do. All right, hopefully one of them is enough. And then what we could do, I suppose, is have... Is to, oh... Huh. He's allied uh, with the dead. He was also he's also allied with the dead in the Emmerich campaign, so that's hmm. A little bit of a shame. Maybe we can trade him some stuff to get him to break that alliance. And just so that everybody here is nice and friendly with each other. Or maybe even have him declare war on the Skaven or something like that to help Cathay so that we don't have to do all his work for him. But anyway. Anyway, Vladimir Mikheyev. All right, you guys have these little minor battles. I'll fight those between the episodes rather than uh, waste time on screen. Victor Zambin, not entirely sure about you. Frankly, a village suddenly declares war on us. We don't want you to uh, get ambushed. So I think we're actually going to have to back away for now. From Linsk to Urskoy, we stand strong. My brother agrees. And just stay here in anti-ambush. Oh, wait. Huh. If village teleports on top of you, is it a guaranteed ambush, or... Well, I guess we'll find out if this army gets, uh, if this army gets ambushed. I don't know. Maybe we should back him up, but anyway. Uh, Thunderous Orator for you, sir. Anybody else liable to get a fight going? Ooh, wait, I wanted to knock out Tamarkan and knock him out we shall, so you guys can go right here. And you can leech a little bit of XP, Mr. Vitali Einsev. Do we actually want you? Oh, you're a Kossar commander. We could use you as a as another recruiter slash uh, uh, slash sort of guardian lord, which is solid. I'll resolve. And occupy. Uh, oh, lovely. Seed of rebirth. Hmm, that's a decent pickup. All right, so what we can do with you guys is, well, first of all, Edge Wizard, Maggot Host destroyed. Very nice. Uh, we will go into Magic Winds of Climate Change. Wait. Magic Wards of Climate Change. Uh, yeah, we still need it here because the Monolith of Fester Long and the Burning Monolith and stuff like that. You could, in theory, take all the stuff that isn't the... 
Zargard, are you done recruiting? More or less, yes. Okay, wait. Astro Beast, you have that uh, leader of renown. You need to transfer those Zargard. You're going to start moving. And then you need to go back and start recruiting for Baladna the Defender. We got a lot of recruiting to do. Uh, yeah, okay, I guess we'll deal with these guys next turn or so. You can just sit here. It doesn't really matter. By the looks of it... Okay, wait, 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 wait. One second. Wow, the Exiles and the Heck really want to be friends now. It looks like they're having a bad day against or a bad time against the, uh, uh, the Heralds of Ariel. Hmm. And the Heralds of Ariel are, are fighting Katep rather than bothering fighting Slanish. In fact, they don't really dislike each other as much as I thought they would. Go figure. And the rest of this, by the looks of it, can be destroyed. Oh, that reminds me. You, sir. Can you actually recruit here? I guess it doesn't matter because we still have to take Castle Von Rocken. Is this auto resolvable? Please tell me this is auto resolvable. Uh, you steal tech. And another success, surprisingly. Attack this. And Pyrrhic victory, it'll... Okay. How much do I care about the Kislevite warriors here? Probably not so much, but... I guess I could fight this between the episodes as well. Alright, folks, I think uh, by the looks of it, there's a lot of admin to take care of, so I'm going to call the episode here. Build some buildings, uh, move at least a few things around so we can get back into proper combat next episode. And I'll fight these little stupid minor non auto resolvable battles with the garbage little garrisons, and then we will continue on in the north and the south and the east and the west everywhere we can next time. Stay tuned for more kids left. Don't forget to leave those likes and comments below, hoping for some more fantastic battles as we got this particular episode all glory to the algorithm and thanks for watching